On behalf of the Royal School of Church Music in America and as part of its virtual training course, The Spirit's Tether, welcome to this special recital given by Dr. Marilyn Kaiser. My name is Brad Hughley, and I'm the organist and director of music at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Indianapolis, where we have recorded this concert for the course. Completed in 2008, the Cassavant organ here was conceived in conjunction with a major renovation and expansion of the church. The specifications may be found on the St. Paul's website. Click on the link in the video description to view the stop list. To list the achievements and accolades bestowed on Dr. Kaiser would take as long as her program takes to play. As a teacher, mentor, performer, liturgical and academic advisor, it's safe to say that no corner of this country is untouched by her steady, brilliant influence. Organists have her to thank for her incredible legacy as a teacher. Church musicians have her to thank for her tireless work in parishes of all sizes toward forming complete and confident leaders. Congregations have her to thank for her work on the 1982 Hymnal Committee for the Episcopal Church. And the music world in general has her to thank for the years of remarkable performances given as a concert organist. Dr. Kaiser is no stranger to the organ at St. Paul's. Her Gothic recordings release of the music of Dan Locklayer was recorded here, and today's recital features selections from that recording. Following the recital, please stay for an interview with Dr. Kaiser by Dr. Joe Cosby, president of the Royal School of, Amu Royal School of Church Music in America. We are very honored and pleased to have Marilyn Kaiser give this recital. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the program.
Thank you, Brad. Dan LaClaire is a wonderful friend of mine and is a teacher at, at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem. I've, I've known Dan since he was a college student in Mars Hill College in North Carolina, and I have followed his wonderful career. Dan's written music of all kinds, all choral music, instrumental music, uh, vocal solos, flute, flute and organ pieces, just a vast array, chamber music. Uh, but I love his organ music, or I should say, and I love his organ music. The next piece uh, is from a collection called Windows of Comfort, and Dan was commissioned by the First Presbyterian Church in Topeka, Kansas, to write a series of organ pieces based on the Tiffany windows in this uh, beautiful church in Topeka. And he called the pieces Windows of Comfort because the Tiffany's win uh, name was Louis Comfort Tiffany. So he named the pieces Windows of Comfort. And uh, there are 10 movements, uh, two books. I'm playing <clears throat> And Call Her Blessed. And Dan writes a, a little introduction to each piece, which I'd like to read to you. <clears throat> and call her blessed. The window is Christ and the valiant woman. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God <clears throat> and God in him. From 1 John. And Dan writes... In this window, the woman expresses the highest form of godly love, reflecting both Proverbs 31, 28, her children arise up and call her blessed, and the window's first John inscription. Conceived for the warm foundation stops of the organ and supported by a rich harmonic backdrop, the continuous circular melody of this movement symbolizes <clears throat> the eternal truth that God is love. <clears throat>
since the Royal School of, of Church Music in America is now headquartered in North Carolina at Duke University, I thought it would be appropriate to do some pieces by North Carolina composers. So I have chosen to open with two pieces by Dan LaClaire, and uh, now I'm going to play four very brief chorale preludes by Margaret Sandresky. Born in 1921, she just celebrated her 100th anniversary, her 100th birthday. She lives also in Winston-Salem, and uh, these pieces are based on Moravian hymns. There are four uh, chorale preludes, uh, which you will read in your program. They were commissioned for the 200th anniversary of the sanctuary dedication of the home Moravian church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They're so delightful as she is, just a beautiful human being, and I hope you enjoy these pieces.
The next piece is by Johann Sebastian Bach, a setting of Ein Feste Burg, which was transcribed from uh, Cantata 80. It was transcribed by an American composer, Gerald Neer. Uh, it's the middle movement of the cantata, and it's a wonderful, a wonderful transcription. One of my colleagues at a conference one summer said it sounds like Bach actually wrote this for the organ, and it, it really is a great piece. I hope you enjoy it.
And the last piece <clears throat> is by Louis Vienne, the Carillon de Westminster, one of my great uh, most favorite pieces. I hope you all enjoy it.
I'm Joe Cosby, and I'm the president of the Royal School of Church Music in America, and it is a great pleasure to visit with Dr. Marilyn Kaiser this afternoon. Dr. Kaiser is the Chancellor's Professor of Music Emeritus at the Jacobs School of Music in Bloomington, Indiana, and one of RSCM America's Artists in Residence. Welcome. Thank you, Joe. As the primary mission of RSCM America, we seek to offer educational opportunities to learn and practice the skills involved in church music, either as volunteers or as professionals. Could you tell us how you came to IU and how you developed the classes that you taught at IU in church music? Well, I've, I've attended church since I was born. <laughs> My dad was a Methodist minister, and so we, we went to church. He had very small churches. He had a full-time job, a secular job, and then he had uh, church churches on Sunday morning, three churches. So I've been in church since I was very, well, since I was born. And I started playing in church when I was uh, 15 on a, a Hammond organ at the first congregational <laughs> church, uh, which was meeting in the Jewish temple because their church had burned down. It was very interesting. But anyway, then I had a two-man-year cast event, but... Um, I, so I, I went to Illinois Wesley and I played in church there. I went to Union Theological Seminary. I played in a church there, a little Methodist church. I was Fred Swan's assistant for a year, and I was Alec Whiten's assistant at the cathedral for four years. But my experiences in Western North Carolina as uh, organist and director at uh, All Souls Parish, then now Cathedral, and uh, in the Diocese of Western North Carolina, traveling around to small churches really solidified my understanding of how important it is to share music in, with the world, but in small churches in particular, because so many of these young, uh, or so many of the organists in these small churches don't have an opportunity. So when I came to IU, um, I, I developed a course called the Sacred Music Practicum. I taught a course in hymnology or hymnody, uh, I taught a course in, in anthem, uh, anthems and motets. We called it small forms. And, <laughs> and a course in uh, large forms, oratorios, passions, and things like that, kind of a survey course. But the church music practicum really uh, focused on, on hymn playing, anthem accompanying, working with pastors, just the kind of thing, wedding music, mm -hmm. what do you do when the mother's bride comes, this kind of thing. <laughs> so um, it was really intended to be a really practical experience. When I first came, I thought seriously about having one of the doctoral students uh, be uh, uh, kind of go around and supervise the young, the young organists who had churches in the nearby area. That we did that at Union, and it was so helpful. I went, during my master's study, I had I was at a very small church, an electronic organ in Ber Bergenfield, New Jersey. And one of the doctoral students came and supervised me and wrote notes about my service playing, well, how I worked with the choir, and so on. But I think this kind of mentoring uh, idea has stuck with me throughout my lifetime. I really care a lot about that and, and working with young people and helping them develop as church musicians. So what advice would you give <laughs> to a young organist or young musician who maybe sings in the church choir or who has experience being in that kind of community and maybe if they're thinking about a career in, in church music? Well, I think, I think it's really important to go to a school that honors and helps develop church musicians. I, there are some schools that, that do that very well um, I, I think having a, a mentor or a teacher who sees the importance of him playing, uh, of learning the skills of improvisation, or at least of accompanying, not everybody needs to improvise, but, but certainly to play hymns well and to uh, accompany anthems so, and solos, I think those things are really important. I mean, I love the organ repertoire. I love the schools that teach academic uh, uh, practice, the performance practice. That's 
critical too. But but we all and almost all organists end up working in church, and I just think it's so important to learn how to play hymns. Just one one other thing. When I was in high school, I had a, a wonderful teacher who was a graduate of Union Theological Seminary in the set and and he had me learn two hymns every week for my for my lesson. For two years, I did that mm-hmm. in the Methodist hymnal. I learned one playing all the voice parts, and then I learned to solo out the melody, mm-hmm. alto tenor in my left hand and the bass part in the pedal. And I, I, at first I thought, I will never, ever learn how to do this. But it really served me well. Introducing new hymns it has helped me so much through my life uh, to be able to lead and, and help congregations learn new hymns. So. That's wonderful. So you are the director of music and the organist at Trinity Episcopal Church in Bloomington on Kirkwood and Grant. (laughs) I love to say that. It sounds so fun. (laughs) And you have a program there where you have college students that sing in your choir and also organists who apprentice with you. Could you talk a little bit about your music program there? When when I came to IU, I talked to the dean about the possibility of having a music intern. Uh, Bob Rayfield had been there Mm -hmm. before. He he and I were co-organists when I first started at Trinity, and he had organ students from the organ department come and assist him. And so I went to the dean, Charles Webb, and asked if it might be possible to get some scholarship help from from the university. And so uh, he agreed to that, and several other churches in Bloomington, other churches have followed suit. <clears throat> but I started out with a, a graduate student. Uh, usually it was a two-year tenure, sometimes uh, three, something, one, one student stayed four years, but, uh, but it was just helping a company play when I was away, play, learn how to play, or they did know how to play hymns, but, mm-hmm. to, you know, playing hymns in the service. Yeah. Um, that and uh, now I have two undergraduate organ scholars that were uh, we have some funding that has helped uh, give them uh, some assistance and they are also members of the music team. I have about 45 in the choir. Um, that was another <laughs> another thing. I went. To, uh, I started when I went there. I went uh, to speak to the rector about the possibility of getting some organ scholars. I did that when I was in Asheville at, at the church. I had four and then eight students from Mars Hill College in Mars Hill, North Carolina, mm-hmm. real close. Most of them were Southern Baptists. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it transformed the choir. It just, it, it, was, it just absolutely transformed the choir. And the same thing has happened. There were only about seven people in the choir when I, in the 11 o'clock choir when I started at Trinity. And, and the, the young voices really brought a great deal of energy and, and, and joy and musicality and, and uh, to all of that to the, to the choir. And so uh, the rector went to one of the members of the parish, the the widow, actually, of one of the former deans at at IU Music School. And she gave money, $5,000, for her whole life, and then left us an endowment also for uh, the scholarship, music scholar program. So now I have 16 uh, uh, choral scholars and uh, many wonderful, devoted members of the choir who volunteer. Uh, it's really, really exciting to see the the energy that develops the the community that develops. You have it too. We yes. we all do. Yes. Every every Episcopal or every church choir is a community, a very unique and wonderful community in any in any denomination. So absolutely, yeah. It's such a wonderful opportunity for those students to have that and to to have mentors, and, and the mentorship works both ways, from young to old and old to young. Yeah, and it's so, oh, that's good. so wonderful to see that. And so, the, the uh, volunteers uh, go to the recitals of the students and mm-hmm. check up on them and <laughs> take them food when they're not feeling well and, yeah. you know, all those things. It's a wonderful thing. So during this 
interesting year we've had. Um, you became one of our artists in residence for RSCM and have been doing quite a bit of teaching organ lessons virtually. Could you talk to us about your experience with the iPhone and how we figured out how to teach in this new and interesting way. It's really wonderful. I have had a ball. I really have loved it. I just, the, the people who have, who have responded and signed up for lessons uh, really were eager and appreciative and we just had such a good time. Some people took one lesson, a number of people took three or four lessons and I, I have continued to, uh, I mean, I, I will continue. Right now I'm continuing to say I will be happy to do that anytime. Uh, I, I put my phone on, on a music stand right by the organ. If I was talking, responding to them, they had a, their iPad or their phone so that I could see their hands and feet. Uh, but it worked, it worked out amazingly well. And sometimes I would just take the phone with my right hand if I wanted to demonstrate something. And, uh, you know, I didn't feel there were any glitches, really. It, it worked out extremely well. And it was, it was a real gift to me to have that kind of, of, well, again, community in the middle of the pandemic because we weren't having choir and I wasn't able to teach any of my organ students. And so it was great. It's a wonderful thing. And folks at home, when that opportunity comes around again, please sign up because I took some lessons too. <laughs> and it really does work. It is a wonderful thing. Dr. Kaiser, thank you for your beautiful playing today here at St. Paul's You're and welcome. for being part of our RSC in America family. And it is a pleasure. My joy. <laughs>